Hey everyone, this is Fabi here and today I'm going to show you my 2021 Long Range Model 3. Now if you want to see my first impressions on the Model 3 and you want to see me drive a Model 3 performance, you can check out the video which is going to be linked in a card up there. But this video is going to be me talking about my Model 3, this is my personal one, and I'm going to tell you about 10 things I like about it and 10 things I don't like so much about it. Don't get me wrong though, the car is absolutely amazing, so there's nothing to be afraid about. If you're thinking about buying a Model 3, I suggest you go ahead and buy one because it's really just an amazing car. By the way, if you guys are wondering where we are, this is the beautiful countryside of Romania. More specifically, we are in Timish County and uh, I will leave a link to Google Maps so you can see where we are right now. You can reach this place uh, through the supercharger network and the roads are in very, very good condition. Before jumping on to today's video, I just want you guys to hear a quick message from today's sponsor, BCB Way. Special thanks to BCB Way, which is a one-stop shop for all your BCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to find out how you can order 5 BCBs for less than $25. I've personally used BCB Way before being sponsored by them to order BCBs for myself and over 100 colleagues from university for a class project and the interaction with them has always been great, same as with the quality of the delivered BCBs. No matter how complex your BCB requirements are, BCB Way has got you covered. So my absolute favorite feature of the Tesla is the regular autopilot. This makes highway driving and to some extent even city driving absolutely worryless. And especially on highway sections like this one, you can put it in autopilot and you're basically forgetting that you're driving. It's almost like you're a passenger and you're just looking at the car, how it drives itself. It's really amazing and it means you're going to arrive at your destination fresh and capable of working or doing whatever you have to do when you arrive there. So the nice thing about this car is the fact that you've got a really well-built app through which you can do many things such as open the car, open the trunk as you can see in the back, you can uh, for example vent the car so if you leave your car and it's uh, really warm outside you can make the windows roll down a little bit so the car will get a little bit cooler. You can also control the climate and it will tell you what the temperature is outside, inside. You can control the seat heaters, the uh, steering wheel heater. You can also see where your car is currently. So this is where my car is and it should also show where I'm at. So I'm next to my car. I can also check if sentry mode is activated. I can activate valet mode and I can also activate the speed limit mode. I can also schedule charging and make sure my car is uh, heated up before I drive through preconditioning. And it's also nice because this here is actually my car so it's got the wheels that I've got, the color of the car is matched and also if you're driving the wheels will turn. It's really just nicely thought out. The third thing I like about the car is actually a deal breaker for me. I don't need car keys anymore. So I'm coming close to the car with my phone and the car unlocks. I don't need any key fob, any card, anything. It's just my phone and my phone is always on me. This is amazing. The benefit of sentry mode is that you can leave your car parked with relative ease of mind because when you are going to return to your car, it's going to show you all of the events that have happened. And events mean that somebody got too close to your car. There's the sentry mode, which films you with one of these three cameras up front. It also films you with this camera over on each side. And also in the back with the camera which sits right over there. You have a button on this plug, so if you press the button, the door will open. Just push the cable in and now it will soon start flashing the green light when it starts charging you can see over there this is faster than the previous Kona that I tried it's faster than the YouTube videos I saw and if you look at the screen right now you will see that the car is charging and uh, the state of charge right now is really high so the speeds are not going to be high but if you come in with low state of charge you can achieve higher than 200 kilowatt speeds Another great thing when you're traveling long distance is the fact that you've got a very good trip planner. So let's say I want to go to the Romanian seaside, I just enter in my destination and it plans for the supercharger stops along the route 
and if you are a little bit close to not making it, it will tell you to stay below a certain speed so you can reach your destination. And it will tell me I need to stay for 25 minutes at Sibiu and I need to stay for an hour to charge at Pitesht and then I will reach my destination with 6%. And it will also tell me how long this will take. Something else that I also like is the fact that you can look at the energy graph and it will show you what it thinks, what it predicts the consumption will be like along the way and you will also be able to see what it predicted at the start and how you are doing when you are driving because you can be more efficient or less efficient and then it will show you if you're more efficient or less efficient than initially calculated. You can also see a historical graph of your consumption and you can also see all of the superchargers on the map and you can also see if they have any free spots or how many free spots they've got. Even though it's an electric car you do have a lot of space in the boot and I will show you right now there's plenty for a few luggage and you've also got this pretty generous space over here for chargers and some other things you might have you can put a backpack in here also a little bit of storage over here for some water bottles of course the trunk is automatic there's plenty of storage even on the inside you've got this compartment here which also has a light over there, plenty of space for, uh, I think for a two liter water bottle. And then you also got some space over here in the armrest, as you can see. Finally, moving over to the front, you got some space here for a backpack or the best use case in my opinion is takeaway food because this is isolated from the cabin so you won't smell any of the food. The acceleration means you're never going to be last at a traffic light, oh my God. Another nicety is the fact that you have a four angle dash cam and you can also set it to activate it when you honk the horn. Just like that. Charging stops are never going to be boring because you can play games while you're charging or watch Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, whatever floats your boat. Man, this is chaos. Quickly after starting the video, I realized that talking about just 10 things I like about the car is not enough. So here are five more rapid fire things I like about the car and the first one is the panoramic roof which is especially nice when you've got trees or large buildings all around you. All new Teslas come with the boombox feature which can basically replace your horn on the outside and you can play sounds like this one. That's really fun. And you can also add up to five custom sounds on the USB drive, which is connected in your glove box. Another thing I appreciate is the great cell reception. So I have phones on all four carriers in my country and the Tesla is always capable of holding a reception longer than my phones are when we are entering a low reception zone. Something else that I appreciate aesthetically about the car is that it's got frameless windows. Another nicety is you've got four USB-C ports, two in the front, two in the back, and also a USB-A port in the glove box, which you can't really open unless you got the keys to the car. And you've also got two wireless charging pads in the front. All right, so the first thing I don't like about the car is autopilot. I know I said I like autopilot a lot, and that's true. And it's capable of driving in stop and go situations, but what I don't like about it is that it will not stop at a red light. So if you have a car in front of you, it will stop behind it obviously, but if you're the first one at the light, it will not stop at a red light, which is really a disappointment and you have to wait for full self driving for that to be uh, happening. And that will take a little bit of time, especially in Europe where the regulation is still funky around this. In addition to flashing the lights at people, sentry mode should also honk when people get too close, like these keys right here. I mean, I understand, I was also looking at Teslas before I owned one, but actually coming this close to one and trying to open the car is really a no-go. Sometimes the app can take a little bit too long to connect to the car, especially when the cell reception is bad, but if you're close to a car and want to open the trunk, for example, or something like that, this is not a problem because you are in Bluetooth range and it's pretty much instant. So you can see it's very fast. Okay, so I told you that the trip planner is really well done, but something that I don't like and a lot of people don't like is the fact that you can't add waypoints. So I just added my destination, but there's no way for me to add a secondary destination. If I type in 
another destination, it will clear out the previous one and it will add a new destination, but there's no way to add waypoints. One annoyance with the Model 3 is the fact that it uses the cameras for autopilot to determine if it's raining. So it doesn't have a rain sensor. The sensor that you can see over there is an ambient line sensor, so it's not used for rain. If you look at the windshield on this Hyundai Kona electric though, you can see a rain sensor. And this is how most cars are and this functions very well, I would say. I have driven cars before that have one of these and it's just much more reliable than the system Tesla uses. So I showed you the very well executed Tesla app, but one thing that annoys me about it has to do with Summon. Now, there's also Smart Summon, but today I'm going to refer just to Summon, which is included in the Enhanced Autopilot or the Full Self Driving uh, package. But the thing is, the Summon, the Dump Summon as some people call it, it's pretty dumb. You can just move your cards forwards and backwards and it's pretty annoying that it's not included in the regular autopilot because it's just free advertising for Tesla. I mean, who doesn't like looking at a car without any driver that moves by itself? Come on, Elon. So I told you I like the frunk, but I don't like the fact that it's not automatic. If you open it up through the app, it's only going to unlock it and then you have to manually lift it up. Because Tesla pays a lot of attention to the temperature of the battery, this car tends to be a little bit inefficient when driving around town for short distances because it spends a little bit more energy heating up the battery and that of course brings up the consumption, especially when compared to the Kona I used to drive before. Don't get me wrong though, this is good for your battery because it means your battery is going to stay in tip-top condition for longer. So I really like the fact that you have a browser inside your car as you can see, it's not the best experience. This is a pretty heavy website because it's got quite a lot of ads and it's also a little bit funny working, but it's it could be better. I mean, it sometimes also crashes with regular web pages such as Google and you know article pages, blogs and stuff like that. It's not an issue. But if you try to open a website with a lot of ads, with videos and stuff like that, it can really bog down the system. One last minor annoyance is that I never get a feel for how hard I have to press to close the frunk and then sometimes you end up with this. But that's easily fixable. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you did enjoy this one, make sure to also check out my first impressions of the Model 3, the performance, which is going to be linked in a card somewhere up there. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. I'll catch up with you guys in the next video. Stay tuned.